The sky, a canvas of infinite possibility, beckoning dreamers and daredevils alike. For those who yearn to touch the clouds, the journey begins with a single, pivotal step, the first solo flight. It's a baptism by air, a delicate dance between exhilaration and apprehension. Today, we turn our attention to one young man, poised on the precipice of this momentous occasion. His name is John Adams, and the story we're about to tell is not just about aviation, it's about courage, determination, and the pursuit of a dream. John's journey is a testament to the human spirit's insatiable desire to conquer new horizons, to taste the freedom of the skies. This is more than just a routine training exercise. It's a transformation, a defining moment etched forever in the memory of a pilot. John Adams, a name soon to be etched in the annals of his own personal aviation history, possesses a quiet confidence. His eyes, reflecting the azure expanse he's about to conquer, hold a mixture of anticipation and resolve. He is young, yes, but his passion for flight belies his years. Every spare moment has been dedicated to this pursuit, poring over textbooks, logging hours in simulators, and absorbing the wisdom of seasoned instructors. You know, the physics of flight is fascinating. But when I describe the feeling of liftoff, it's like the world just shrinks beneath you and the plane becomes an extension of your own being. Today, John will experience that sensation like never before. The controls, the decisions, the responsibility for that metal bird soaring through the heavens, it will all rest solely on his shoulders. The first solo flight is more than just a test of skill, it's a test of character. It demands unwavering focus, a cool head under pressure, and an unshakable belief in one's own abilities. In the cockpit, John will not have the luxury of doubt. Every action, every decision, will be a testament to the countless hours he has dedicated to honing his craft. Each rivet, each cable, each gauge, all of it needs my full attention. I'm no longer just a student following instructions. I'm a pilot taking ownership of my craft. As John goes through the pre-flight checks, his movements are precise, practiced. Every flight, even the most routine training exercise, begins with a series of rituals. These aren't superstitious practices, but a deeply ingrained discipline, a way of imposing order on a world where chaos can have swift and unforgiving consequences. For John, these rituals are more than just procedure. They are a form of meditation, a way of focusing the mind and preparing for the task ahead. Each step in the pre-flight process is a link in a chain, each one critical to the integrity of the whole. There's a quiet beauty to this pre-flight ritual, a ballet of man and machine. John's hands, calloused from hours spent gripping the control yoke, move with the familiarity of a lover tracing a familiar landscape. He checks the fuel levels, inspects the propeller for nicks and dents, ensures the control surfaces move freely. The pre-flight inspection is more than just a technical exercise. It's a dialogue between pilot and plane. I listen with my fingertips, feel for vibrations, detect inconsistencies in the tautness of cables. He runs his hand along the fuselage, sensing the smooth flow of air over its contours. The Cessna, for its part, speaks back in a language of subtle cues of groans and whirs that tell their own story. This is a dance I've practiced countless times, but today there's a heightened awareness, an added intensity to my movements. The stakes are higher, the margin for error narrower. Today there's no safety net, no experienced instructor by his side to offer guidance or reassurance. It's just John, the plane, and the vast expanse of sky waiting to embrace them. As I climb into the cockpit, the familiar scent of leather and aviation fuel envelops me. Before John can even think about taking to the skies, there's a crucial meeting of the minds, the instructor's briefing. This is where experience meets youthful enthusiasm, where years of accumulated wisdom are imparted to the eager student. John's instructor, a man whose face bears the etchings of countless hours spent battling the elements, sits across from him, a weathered aviation map spread out on the table between them. The briefing is a meticulous affair, covering everything from weather patterns and wind conditions to emergency procedures and radio communication protocols. John listens intently, absorbing every word, committing it to memory. 
He knows that up there, at 10,000 feet, there's no room for hesitation, no time for second-guessing. With the briefing complete, it's time for the final act of preparation, the pre-flight checklists. This is aviation's version of a surgeon scrubbing up before an operation, a ritualized sequence of actions designed to eliminate any possibility of oversight or error. John runs through the checklists with the practiced ease of a concert pianist performing a familiar concerto. Every switch, every lever, every gauge is checked and double-checked. Fuel mixture, ignition system, flight controls, navigation lights, nothing is left to chance. John's voice, clear and steady, echoes through the cockpit as he calls out each item on the list, confirming its status. It's a litany of reassurance, a symphony of preparedness. Once those checklists are complete, there's no turning back. The air inside the cockpit seems to crackle with an invisible energy. John takes a deep breath. The scent of leather and aviation fuel a familiar comfort. His hand rests on the throttle, fingers twitching with a nervous energy. This is it, the point of no return. The moment when months of preparation, of drills and lectures and simulated flights, crystallizes into a single decisive action. He pushes the throttle forward, slowly, deliberately, feeling the surge of power as the engine roars to life. The propeller becomes a blur, a hypnotic disc slicing through the air. The Cessna shudders, eager to break free from gravity's embrace. Cessna 172, cleared for takeoff. John pushes the throttle forward, feeling the plane surge forward, gaining speed as it races down the runway. The world outside becomes a blur of green and brown, the trees lining the runway flashing by in a dizzying rush. John's eyes dart back and forth between the instrument panel and the rapidly approaching end of the runway. His grip on the control yoke tightens, knuckles white. He pulls back gently on the yoke, feeling the resistance as the Cessna strains against gravity's pull. For a moment, there's a sensation of weightlessness, a feeling of being suspended between earth and sky. Then, with a gentle bump, the wheels leave the ground. John is airborne. Alone. The ground falls away with astonishing speed, the familiar landscape shrinking beneath him. The initial rush of adrenaline gives way to a strange calm. John scans the instrument panel, checking altitude, airspeed, engine parameters. Everything is within normal limits. His training kicks in, the rote memorization of checklists and procedures transforming into instinctive action. He glances out the cockpit window, taking in the breathtaking panorama that unfolds before him. The world stretches out in every direction, a patchwork of fields and forests, roads and rivers, all dwarfed by the immensity of the sky. A wave of pure joy washes over him. This is what it feels like to be free. He takes a deep breath, savoring the moment, etching it into his memory. The first few minutes of any flight are critical, a delicate dance between pilot and aircraft, a feeling out process as the two become one. My senses are heightened, feeling the subtle responses of the Cessna to my touch. He adjusts the rudder pedals, trimming the aircraft, feeling it bank smoothly into a gentle turn. I'm acutely aware of every sound, every vibration, every subtle shift in the air currents buffeting the wings. The hum of the engine is a reassuring lullaby, a testament to the power that propels him skyward. The air rushes past the cockpit windows, a constant whisper reminding me of the speed at which I'm slicing through the air. John smiles, a sense of accomplishment washing over him. The initial jitters of takeoff have dissipated, replaced by a calm focus. I settle into the rhythm of flight, my movements becoming an instinctive ballet of hand and foot. The Cessna, responsive to his touch, becomes an extension of his will, banking, climbing, and turning with effortless grace. I'm no longer merely piloting the aircraft, I'm dancing with it. Each control input elicits a subtle response from the aircraft, a change in pitch, a shift in direction, a fluctuation on the altimeter. Attuned to these nuances, I make constant, minute adjustments, maintaining a delicate equilibrium between man and machine. The hum of the engine provides a steady, reassuring beat to this airborne symphony. 
Outside the cockpit windows, the world unfurls in a breathtaking panorama. John, his gaze sweeping over the landscape, feels a sense of awe at the sheer vastness of it all. From this vantage point, the world seems both immense and strangely intimate. He can see the curvature of the Earth on the horizon, a subtle reminder of the planet's spherical embrace. Clouds drift by like celestial cotton balls, casting fleeting shadows on the ground below. The air is remarkably smooth at this altitude, the Cessna gliding through the sky with minimal turbulence. John relishes the sensation of effortless movement, the feeling of being suspended between heaven and earth. It's a sensation that never fails to inspire a sense of wonder, a reminder that the human spirit is capable of achieving anything it sets its mind to. The silence in the cockpit, broken only by the steady drone of the engine and the occasional crackle of static from the headset, is both comforting and unnerving. It's a silence that underscores the solitude of his situation, the fact that he is utterly alone up here, responsible for his own destiny. But it's also a silence that allows him to think, to reflect, to truly appreciate the magnitude of what he is accomplishing. He thinks about his wife, Sarah, back on the ground, her heart probably pounding with a mixture of anxiety and pride. He wishes she could be here to share this moment with him, to experience the exhilaration of flight firsthand. He knows she worries about him, but she also understands his passion, his need to touch the sky. He reaches for the radio microphone, his thumb hovering over the transmit button. The voice on the other end crackles back, a reassuring presence in the vast emptiness of the sky. Roger that, Cessna 172. Maintain current altitude and heading. Report any changes. John acknowledges the instruction, a smile playing on his lips. It's strange to think that down there, amidst the hustle and bustle of everyday life, there are people whose sole job it is to guide him through the sky, to keep him safe. The wind, though generally calm, makes its presence known in subtle ways, a slight buffeting of the wings, a momentary dip in altitude. John, ever vigilant, corrects for these fluctuations, keeping the Cessna on course, his movements becoming second nature. He adjusts the controls, feeling the Cessna respond with predictable obedience. He's learned to anticipate the aircraft's reactions, to work in harmony with the forces of lift, drag, thrust, and gravity. It's a delicate dance, a constant interplay between pilot and plane and one that John is beginning to master. As the minutes tick by, John's confidence grows. He's comfortable up here, in control of his destiny. The initial anxiety is faded, replaced by a quiet sense of accomplishment. He's doing it. He's flying solo. And he's loving every minute of it. He runs through the checklist for the next maneuver, a series of steep turns designed to test his control of the aircraft. He's practiced these turns countless times before, but today, they feel different. Today, there's no safety net, no instructor riding shotgun. It's just him and the Cessna alone together in the vast blue canvas of the sky. He eases back on the control yoke, feeling the G-forces press him into his seat. The Cessna banks steeply, its wingtips slicing through the air. The ground seems to fall away beneath him, the horizon tilting at a disconcerting angle. But John remains calm, his hands steady on the controls, his eyes scanning the instrument panel. The time has come to start thinking about heading back to the airfield. As much as John would love to stay up here, soaring above the world, he knows that all good things must come to an end. Besides, he has a story to tell, an experience to share. Control, this is Cessna November 234 requesting return to base. Cessna November 234, you are cleared to return. Wind is calm. Runway 27 is in use. John jots down the information on his kneeboard, his hand steady despite the slight tremor of excitement that runs through him. The Cessna begins its descent, the world below gradually expanding to fill his field of vision. The air, cooler now, rushes past the cockpit windows, carrying with it the faint scent of freshly cut grass and damp earth. John takes a deep breath, savoring the moment, committing it to memory. The world, once a distant tapestry, begins to sharpen, details emerging from below. 
John reduces the throttle, feeling the familiar deceleration. The air cooler now carries the faint scent of pine and damp earth. Altitude and airspeed check. He consults his instruments, cross-referencing altitude and airspeed. The control tower's voice crackles through the headset, confirming the runway. The sun, now a molten disk, casts long shadows across the landscape. John's attention is consumed by the intricate choreography of landing. The Cessna glides through the air, its sleek silhouette a stark contrast to the puffy cumulus clouds drifting lazily across the twilight sky. John, his gaze fixed on the approaching runway, makes minute adjustments to the controls, compensating for wind drift and maintaining the correct glide path. His breathing, though a tad faster now, remains steady, a testament to his growing confidence and mastery of the aircraft. Steady, steady. The air crackles with a mixture of anticipation and relief as he lines up the Cessna with the center line of the runway, the white painted numbers growing steadily larger in his windshield. This is it, the culmination of all those hours spent honing his skills, the moment where theory translates into tangible accomplishment. A wave of pride washes over him, tempered by the sobering awareness that the landing, though close, is not yet complete. Almost there. There's a saying amongst pilots. Takeoffs are optional, landings are mandatory. It's a humorous adage, but one that underscores the critical nature of this final maneuver. A good landing requires finesse, precision, and a healthy dose of respect for the unforgiving nature of solid ground. The Cessna, responding to John's deft touch, seems to almost sigh as it nears the runway. I reduce the throttle to idle, the engine's roar subsiding to a gentle purr. The wheels chirp as they make contact with the tarmac. My heart is pounding as I ease back on the control yoke. He'd flown solo and lived to tell the tale. The engine idles, its once mighty roar now a soft hum. He taxis the Cessna off the runway, the setting sun casting long shadows. The air is filled with the scent of aviation fuel and freshly cut grass. He brings the Cessna to a stop in front of the hangar. He takes a deep breath, savoring the moment. He runs a hand along the Cessna's fuselage, the metal still warm. As he gathers his belongings, John glances back at the Cessna, pride swelling in his chest. John Adams stepped back onto solid ground, the tarmac firm beneath his feet, yet he felt lighter than air. The weight of the Cessna, of the responsibility of those solitary minutes commanding the sky, it had all lifted, leaving in its place a profound sense of accomplishment. His smile, once laced with nervous tension, now bloomed with genuine elation. He could still feel the ghost of the control yoke in his hands, the subtle pressures of the rudder pedals beneath his feet. The world, viewed from above, had taken on a new dimension, a breathtaking tapestry of greens and browns, of winding rivers reflecting the late afternoon sun. He had touched the face of the sky, danced with the wind, and returned to Earth forever changed. The first solo flight is a rite of passage, a transformation as much as an accomplishment. It is a solitary journey, yet one that connects every pilot to a lineage stretching back to the Wright brothers and beyond. In those quiet moments above the world, John Adams had joined their ranks, etching his name in the annals of personal aviation history. The memory of the flight, still vivid in his mind, would stay with him always. The roar of the engine on takeoff, the ground falling away with breathtaking speed. But more than just the physical sensations, it was the quiet moments of contemplation, the realization of his own capabilities. He had faced a challenge, stared down his fears, and emerged victorious. He had become a pilot, not just in title, but in spirit. John Adams's solo flight, a testament to dedication and meticulous preparation, serves as an inspiration to aspiring aviators everywhere. It's a reminder that the sky, in all its vastness, is not a barrier, but a canvas upon which dreams take flight. The journey of a thousand miles, as they say, begins with a single step, or in this case, a single takeoff. His story, while unique in its details, echoes the universal yearning to push boundaries, to taste freedom, to experience the world from a different perspective. The thrill of the first solo flight, that heady mix of exhilaration and trepidation, is a feeling shared by pilots across generations, a bond forged in the crucible of the sky. Stay tuned for more inspiring stories from the world of aviation, as we delve into the lives of those who dare to challenge gravity and embrace the boundless possibilities of the sky.
Next up, we explore first solo flight, the instructor's perspective, a compelling look at the other side of this pivotal moment in a pilot's journey.